Okay, you see, uh, we like the teamwork. <laughs> so, so as that, uh, what we present here is the result from teamwork, we thought uh, as we are traveling together to Israel, we should present together. So perhaps um, it's also nice. So we take you to a little uh, journey, a journey of um, which actually hasn't started in academic, but started in practice. So actually, uh, as we were presented, um, we are working together in design consultancy, uh, design thinking and creativity consultancy, so we don't do design the works, but we can leave it. Still not there. <laughs> A bit of ambience. <laughs> um, so uh, this is perhaps different from the other presentations. Actually, we had a client from social innovation and um, I mean, I'm in uh, university and academic and research, but um, research is not, or, or academic is not financing our research. We finance our research by real projects from clients. So here in this uh, context, the client was from social innovation. And when we got that, um, yeah, this order, we thought, oh, that's a good opportunity to do research on that. Okay, so this is the context. So the title is Design Thinking Workshop for Social Workers. And now, who are we? <laughs> so, um, Joanna and Joanna, we, we say always the two Joannas, uh, actually um, did the workshop, the different workshops, several workshops with uh, um, social workers. And um, coming, me coming from, from academic um, and research, so actually my role was more supervising, but I also was involved in uh, creating the program and also going to some of the meetings and the final presentations, etc. Um, and we have different backgrounds. So, um, Joana Santos is from education and business, so the business part here is covered. Then Joana Moreira is a product designer and also working in innovation in several contexts. And me is a part from research, but also to consulting, facilitation, etc. Um, and yeah, we work together in the kind of mind shake. So um, let me just introduce the background of our study and then I pass over. Um, you see here DT, DT, so this is design thinking and design thinking. Um, but we see it, um, actually, when I did my PhD, I did it about design thinking, but at that moment, design thinking were written in um, lowercase. That means, means design thinking as a, a cognitive process from designers. That's what I researched at the time, that was 20 years ago. Um, and then, um, actually, my personal um, journey is showing a little bit also what is the focus on this conference how design thinking from lowercase now came to design thinking to uppercase, and we see here design thinking as an innovation method. And this uh, case we will present to you, um, design thinking were used as a method for social innovation. Okay? So the paper then goes a bit deeper to this and I pass it to you. Just a little bit of the background on social innovation. So um, since we are we come from the background of design, we wanted to understand the role of designers in social innovation. And we did some prior research to this one. Um, actually, it's a paper that we had that is written in Portuguese, in case you want to read. <laughs> um, but we understood that the designers have several roles. So they can be um, supporting the social organizations, um, developing their, their projects. They can um, have a role as a design activist, or in this case a trigger that will initiate uh, the project, or as a facilitators, like both of us were in this training that Joanna uh, will um, talk um, the following. Yeah. So regarding the, um, the connection between design thinking and social innovation, we understood that definitely design thinking has value for, for social workers because of the process. And as Katya said, we are um, approaching design thinking as the innovation process. So we understood that this um, will make the, the people uh, more inclusive. Um, it will allow uh, the collaborative uh, work. Definitely it's more empowering because of the topics uh, that um, we are working on and have the potential for co-creation. So it's not only just, you know, like working together, but act 
actively working together. And for that, uh, we created a model um, of design thinking for social innovation at Mindshake that comes from uh, two other models. One is uh, Evolution 6 that you can see uh, there in the corner was created by Kata Chima. And the other one is the social innovation spiral from Nesta. So we did some uh, research, as I said before, on how the what's, what's the relation between design thinking and social innovation, what's the borders, what, what are the, the, the blocks that will um, that this process has and what's, what are the connections. So we understand um, that these two models merge will come to a model of six phases that was the model that we used to create the program and the sessions and all the tools. So our research hypothesis is uh, how can design thinking as an innovation method be actually uh, significant for the social workers if this has an impact on their, their mindset, if this has an impact on their work process. So the, the goals of our studies were to demonstrate the potential of design thinking process um, and obviously the impact uh, on the social workers uh, process to, in, and their ways to collaborate and to actually verify this through a practical uh, experiment. Um, so for that, Joanna will explain all our process. So uh, in August 2018, the National Commission for the Promotion of Children, Youth and Protection, Youth Rights and Protection invited Mindshake to collaborate in a, a larger project they have called Adelia. Adelia is a project about uh, positive parenthood. So it has lots of initiatives and this was just one of them because they realized they needed to help social workers design better projects to work with families and children. So we thought, as Katya mentioned in the beginning, this was an attractive opportunity for us uh, to, in, to investigate uh, since this group of people were social workers. Uh, uh, some of them, their background and their academic background is social worker, uh, but they can be also teachers, uh, psychologists, but they all work for uh, social institutions and directly with families and children. Uh, and so we took this opportunity to design a series of uh, sessions in a, in a larger workshop based on the social evolution model that Joanna sh just showed us. Um, and the main question for this research was can social workers be design thinking practitioners? Um, so how did we uh, try to answer this question? So uh, the research was through design and we applied three types of techniques, a pre and post questionnaire that we'll detail later. Uh, field observation mainly did, uh, Joanna and I did it during the sessions with the, with, the, with the social workers during the training and deep interviews with uh, one of um, one one participant from each group several uh, several months uh, after the, the the end of the training so the questionnaire was quite complete and we we took uh, a lot of energy uh, designing this questionnaire because it had like four areas the first one was the principles and you all know the principles of design thinking uh, and we wanted to, to understand how people felt about these principles, how they situated themselves. The practices uh, they could adopt, and they are mainly related to the phases of the model. And the techniques and tools, the methods and tools, the specifics like uh, uh, mind mapping, st stakeholder mapping, brainstorming, so all specific tools they used during the training. And the mindset, so we were wondering how they felt pre and post training about empathy, divergency, and all of the, these other uh, ne necessary skills. There were three sets of workshops. One was done in the north region of Portugal, the other in the center, the other in Alentejo. You should visit. Uh, it's in the south, it's very beautiful. Um, and initially it was uh, thought to be a five full day workshop, but then COVID came 
And uh, actually, uh, in the first, uh, as you can see there, we started in March and then in September 2020 because the pandemic blew uh, uh, after like three days of workshop. So, and, and it's important to understand that these people work directly with families. So during COVID, they were frontline workers too, not health workers, but they were social workers and they had to be ready and in their posts. So after, the, uh, after COVID, we had to change, we had to reschedule, we had to adapt, uh, mainly to other uh, formats, hybrid and uh, online. Um, the five days, you can see them here, they are, I'm not going to read it specifically, so you can see that there are five days that more or less relate to the first five phases of the model, not the sixth phase, because the sixth phase is systemic change, and of course we don't train people, at least on this stage, on systemic change. But then we had a sixth day with a pitch, uh, pitch presentation. So all uh, of the participants were invited to develop a project they felt could be implemented in their communities. So the training was really hands-on, not a theoretical training, of course. Uh, so they developed a project um, in context of their communities, and then they presented it in the sixth day to a jury of um, social innovation experts, mainly from innovation um, incubators, and some people from the academic uh, research about uh, children's rights. Uh, and it was uh, quite interesting. I think we have some photos, right? Yeah. So here we can see people still laughing without a mask. Uh, it was in the first three days. Um, we had like ideation, uh, prototyping, and then we can see in a more controlled environment the presentation. It was a public presentation, but it also had a streaming uh, online. Actually, with masks on already. Uh, yeah, with masks on already. Um, and the online workshop here, the, the, as you all experienced, the dynamics are not the same, but we worked hard to, to get the, the, the most out, out of the groups and in terms of collaboration. We used the uh, Zoom calls and also a collaborative platform, Miro, Miro uh, to design together. Um, findings. Uh, we brought these two graphics here just to show you two of the most uh, surprising or relevant. Um, although these are people that work with people every day, they were really, um, they changed their view about the, 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 the understanding how important it is to understand how people are impacted by problems. So you, we might think they already know this, but still, after the training, the, the results are quite obvious. And also, and this was uh, less surprising, going back and forward. So they know they are, they are uh, professionals, they know what's right, they know what's, what's good, and sometimes they, they felt very insecure about going back and forward, uh, making mistakes, uh, but after the training, the, the, the results in the questionnaire showed that they agree that it's uh, important to go back and forward, to iterate. Although some positive results, uh, some detractors from <laughs> design thinking might be glad to know that there wasn't a huge positive evolution uh, in trainees as design thinkers. So we cannot say after this five day training they are design thinkers. Uh, what we can say is that there are many benefits uh, uh, regarding their mindset, so they were very vocal about how uh, important it felt uh, this training was for the, the way they regard uh, working together. And also uh, uh, those aspects related to creative thinking, divergence. So this, this was a completely new concept for them, to diverge, to think uh, about crazy things. So it, it was very funny also to watch. <laughs> Um, and also, something that uh, in another presentation uh, uh, was mentioned, the self-appraisal of participants. In the beginning, they had, uh, uh, they had a good self-appraisal about their skills related to the, the design thinking principles. And in the end, we were like, oh, come on, it's, it's worse, it's not, it's not getting better. 
But then, thinking about it, and also with the interviews, we realize people now know what they don't know. Now know what they are lacking in terms of uh, working uh, more creatively, more empathet empathetically, more collaboratively. collaboratively. So uh, these are some of the main findings that we got from the social workers' perspective and also our analysis, of course. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the, the impact and the limitations, uh, of course, uh, we've mentioned uh, COVID. The, the main question was rescheduling and also the disengagement of people. So they were very enthusiastic at the beginning and then they had to change and the, the teams changed because someone couldn't go because of something else. So we had a, a fewer, uh, lower response rate in the, the final questionnaire that we, that we were expecting. Uh, so these were the main impacts. Of course, we learned some other things, but we realized it, it didn't go as planned. Uh, so since we only have uh, five minutes, <laughs> try to make it short. Um, the main conclusions, um, so we have three main topics. Um, one is that our model uh, definitely needs to be improved uh, in several levels, like the language that we use, the templates, the techniques like that, that we uh, assign, let's say, to each phase. Um, so th this is like a learning uh, for, for us. Um, but we understood that uh, expanding the, the design frontiers uh, for social workers, and I quote, it was a blessing because they never had uh, nothing, any experience closer to this one. Um, and they actually um, realized that it was very important for them to, like Joanna said before, to work in a more empathic way, in a more collaborative way. And they realized that even though they work for people and with people, um, that they, they don't maybe think the problems uh, through the end. So they definitely consider that uh, expanding the design barriers for them, it was very important. Um, and for us as designers, obviously that um, we understand that going uh, behind, behind these barriers is very important because there are opportunities not only for, in this case, uh, social workers, but also for us as the design community because we can learn uh, with and for other fields. So like the knowledge uh, is more expense and that benefits us all. So thank you so much and we are open for questions.